Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to be going through how to draw skeletal diagrams for organic compounds and look at how to name organic compounds looking at their skeletal diagrams. So what is a skeletal diagram? A skeletal diagram is simply the simplified condensed representation of an organic compound. It is an easy way to work out the nomenclature and represent an organic molecule using this method as compared to the drawing of the expanded diagram for the entire molecule. On the left here, we have an expanded diagram of the hydrocarbon pentane, which has one, two, three, four, five carbons, surrounded by 12 hydrogens. The skeletal diagram on the right-hand side is also pentane. Each of these corners of the skeletal diagram is going to indicate a carbon. So there is one, two, three, four, and five corners indicating five carbons. We know that carbon has four valence electrons, meaning that it has the ability to form four bonds each, However, looking at the skeletal diagram, we can see that there is only one indicated bond per unit of carbon. This is because wherever we do not indicate a bond, we assume that there is a CH bond in that position. Since there are no bonds indicated around the first carbon, there are three CH bonds around that first carbon. Let's draw the skeletal diagrams of these expanded diagram forms of organic substances. For this first hydrocarbon, we see that there are four carbons and there are 10 hydrogens. First, we begin by drawing our carbon backbone. So there is one here, two, three, four carbons. Because all other bonds are carbon-hydrogen bonds, we do not need to draw them in here, as not indicating them assumes that they are already included there. Similarly, on our right-hand side, we will draw our first backbone, which contains three carbons. However, notice that there is a double bond, which we need to indicate in the diagram. Here we have three carbons with our double bond. Now in these diagrams, we see the inclusion of substituent functional groups. Our longest chain length of carbon is one, two, three, four. Here we have four carbons and we include the double bond that is on the end. We said that at carbon, at site number three, there are two methyl groups. So we include those in the diagram. We also include the bromine to carbon bond because that is not a carbon hydrogen bond. And this is our diagram. We do the same thing on the right hand side. However, notice that there is a triple bond indicating the iron functional group. Remember that triple bonds have a 180 degree angle. So we ensure that the carbon triple bond is 180 degrees next to the next carbon single bond. And we can just draw it like so to indicate one, two, three carbons. Now that our first three carbons are drawn, we have two more carbons that we just include like so. On carbon number two, there is a methyl. And on carbon number three, there is a chloro. Alcohols are drawn in the same way as the previous hydrocarbons. However, we also have the inclusion of the alcohol group. Here we have three carbons and the alcohol group on the end. Here we have four carbons with the alcohol group on carbon number two, and that is indicated by our diagram. For this aldehyde on the left-hand side, we have a double bonded O connected to carbon at site number one. For this second ketone, we have the double bonded O connected at carbon number two out of three. At this point, you should be able to draw the rest of these diagrams, but please try to follow along with the video. For our carboxylic acid, we have three carbons. At the first carbon, we have the carboxylic acid group. In our next diagram, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. And at the first carbon, we have the double bonded O and the OH group. On carbon number three, there is another alcohol group. And at carbon number two, there is a chloro group. 
Drawing our ester, there is a characteristic double bonded O and the connection of the carbons at the oxygen site. On the left hand side, we have two carbons connected to a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen. And on the right of the oxygen is just the methyl group. For the amines, unlike carbon hydrogen bonds, we need to indicate that there are nitrogen hydrogen bonds. This means that when we draw our amine, there will be four carbons, and these carbons will be connected to a nitrogen, which has two hydrogens, and we indicate it like so. This will be the same for the amine on the right hand side. We can now practice naming our organic compounds. On the left, we have five carbons with no indicated bonds. Since there are no indicated bonds, this must be pentane. On the right-hand side, we have one, two, three, four carbons. At carbon number two, there is a double bond indicating the alkene functional group. Thus, with four carbons and the double bond at carbon number two, we call this the but to in. This first one is a triple bond containing two carbons on each corner. This must be ethyne. Remember that we said for a triple bond, it is 180 degrees. This is not just for the long central line, so we can imagine that this is actually one, two, three carbons. And next to that, we have two more carbons, meaning that this is a pentine. However, since we have the triple bond on carbon number two, this is going to be pent two ion. Looking at our halogenated hydrocarbons, remember that we are going to prioritize the naming of the halogens meaning that this is going to be a propane because it has one, two, three carbons in its longest chain with the chloro on carbon number one and the methyl on carbon number two. This will be one chloro, two methyl, propane. On our next structure, we have five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. And we give the numbers to each of the carbon sites in order to minimize the number. To minimize the number, this should be number three, and this one should be carbon number two. Since the halogen comes first, this will be three bromo, two methyl, pentane. Similarly, our first alcohol group has the longest chain length of one, two, three, four. This means that this must be a but alcohol. Because there is a methyl on group number two, this is a two methyl butan one O. Similarly, the second one is also a but group since there are four carbons. However, because the alcohol is on carbon number two, this, this is a secondary alcohol, butan 2O. For our third one, this is a tertiary alcohol, and we can tell because the alcohol group lies on a saturated carbon atom, meaning that the carbon has created as many bonds as it can, which are four. Our longest chain length is a length of three, one, two, and three. Since the methyl group lies on carbon number two, as well as the alcohol group, we are going to call this 2-methyl, 2-propan, 2-O. Our first carbonyl compound we should recognize as a carboxylic functional group. The maximum chain length of this is one, two, 
3. Since the methyl group exists on carbon number 2, this is going to be called 2-methyl propan oic acid. Next to this one is the aldehyde propanal because the longest chain length is 3. Finally, we have a ketone on carbon number 3 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is going to be called pentan 3 ohm. Here we have two esters which are demonstrated by the characteristic double bond O and chain length connected at the oxygen site. We count that there are three carbons next to the oxygen site, indicating that the carboxylic acid reactant, when the ester formed, was propanoic acid. Similarly, there are two carbons next to the oxygen, meaning that the alcohol which was used was ethanol. Combining these names together, we use the ethanol end first, which is going to be ethyl, followed by the carboxylic acid end, which is going to be propan, and we finish it by calling it an O8. On the left-hand side, this length has one carbon and three carbons on the right. This will be propyl methanoate. In this section, we have amides. Our first carbonyl group on this section is an amide which contains three carbons. This one is going to be called propanamide. The second one we see, there is a methyl attached to the amide group. While in the front section, it is the same as a propanamide. Since we do not have a name for the site N, we simply indicate it as the N site. This is what we call N methyl, referring to this methyl group, followed by propanamide. Finally, we have a tert amide, which has a dimethyl on the end site. There are four carbons, meaning that this is butanamide, and since there are two methyls on the end, this is what we call NN dimethyl butanamide. For our amines, the first amine has a backbone of four carbons, meaning that it is a butanamide. Since the amine is on carbon number one, this is going to be called butan one amine. The second one is a prop group because there are three carbons. The amine is on carbon number two, meaning this is propan. 2-amine. On the left, there is a methyl next to the amine. So as we did with the naming of the amide, we are going to name this site the N site. This is an N-methyl. And since there are two carbons, this is an ethanamine. With this final one, there is a methyl and two ethyl groups. However, because the longest chain length is two, one of these is going to be included in the name ethanamine. So what we have is we have a methyl, is we have an ethyl on the N site and a methyl on the N site, meaning this will be N ethyl, N methyl. Remember that we are going to be naming these in alphabetical order. And finally, this is an ethanamine.